Hey there, welcome back. This is part two of Scraps or Bust. So last week I left you with these little shapes that we made and I continued to make shapes and find new um, yarns and threads and fabrics that sort of went in this um, neutral color way. You know, I think I mentioned last week that I'm kind of getting this coral feeling so I thought it'd be kind of cool to build sort of a sculpture. I took a piece of uh, Pallon, which is a really heavy um, double-sided fusible um, product. It's also, I think Peltex is another brand name of that. And just cut out this shape. It's I, I took a 12 by um, 7 inch piece of Peltex and then I cut, you can kind of see the mountainous little shapes, and then cut some cutouts. And I thought, wouldn't this be cool to be maybe a candle holder or just a kind of a cool sculpture to hold things in while I'm traveling. What I did was then I took um, a, I took 12 inches and then you divide that by pi and you get the uh, diameter of this circle. And that's um, the base of it. So that's a little, although it kind of looks like a moon, sort of pretty. <laughs> and then I um, pressed one side to the wrong side of a fabric right and then cut out all the little pieces and I left the seam allowance and then I put I took my glue stick and I kind of worked it almost like applique where I glued around the um, seam allowance on the Peltex and folded the fabric down and that's the inside of what I'm picturing now is going to be this candle then I took another fabric just a gray um, hand dyed fabric and pressed that to the other side cut that all out and then folded it under and blanket stitched around the entire thing and around the inside shapes and then I got um, this you know so this is sort of the sculpture that I'm going to stitch all these little pieces onto and I kind of love how it came out I, I spent about two days just making little things finding um, again, just scraps and p bits of yarns and fabrics that go in these colorways and just added them to the piece. And so now I have, I put this little jar in here and I have a, um, sort of a candle holder. See, this is sort of the rotation of all the sides as, as how it looks together. I made a piece of Oya. You can see all the um, the shells that are riding up the side here right and then just like you can see the blanket stitching that I did and that makes it easy to attach like this twisty big ropey wool yarn I put up the side and I just wound um, embroidery floss size April cotton around it and then what was what I thought was really cool is I was able to find the seashell that I picked up years ago when I was in Oceanside with my family and my grandma and grandpa. And um, it's neat to, you know, take a piece of found object from a place that you visited um, and put it on an art piece, which I think is great. So um, I'm coming to you now from Laughlin, Nevada. Here's a little shot from the airplane. I always love seeing what's above the clouds. It's just magical. I'm not really a flyer. As you know, I'm partial to traveling in my Airstream, but it's pretty darn cool to be able to see the Grand Canyon, you know, from, from up above. It's pretty neat. So we're here in Laughlin, and we did the river walk, and I was along the river. Here we are. We're playing bingo, which was really fun. Um, but you know, casinos are really an interesting place. There, I find a lot of inspiration, color and shape and pattern here. Um, you know, even in our hotel room, this is the wall, and I thought, oh, well, how cool would scraps be? Um, you know, just little rectangles of scraps interlaid and interlaced um, through each other might be kind of a cool thing. Um, even the carpets in casinos, I think, are really cool. Interesting colors, interesting shapes. And then of course the slot machines um, always provide an extra little bit of inspiration when you see these really cool colors. And especially when you're winning money, you get all kinds of inspiration when you're staring at these beautiful objects. So here's a couple little pictures from slot machines that I loved. And you know, before I left, what I did was I, I laid out all my scraps from the moonlight colorway of the gypsy satchel and I laid them all out on a uh, piece of wonder under. 
normally I wouldn't use this in quilting. It's a really heavy uh, double-sided interfacing, but for crafts and little things that I do, it's perfect. And I have a ton of it. So awesome. So I laid out a piece of, oh, I, I think it's maybe a 14 inch piece of Wonder Under and I laid all my scraps out, the fabrics, my threads, my yarns, just little clippings that I had. And I put a piece of Teflon over that and then pressed it onto my iron, flipped it over, put the Teflon piece, you know, you're ironing on the paper side, so make sure you put the Teflon piece on your ironing surface when you flip it, because there's still that gooey residue in all the places that I didn't put the threads and yarns, which I which was fine, because I knew I was gonna cover it later. You know, and then you end up with this sort of uh, film on one side and all your scraps on the other side. Then what I did was I took it and I put it on a piece of white fabric. I could have done black, you know, just choose something that's a solid color that you could have for the background, but this is white with sort of some sparkles in it. So I, I put the f fabric right side up and then I put the, the underside of the Wonder Under with all the stuff on all my scraps on it and then a Teflon sheet in that sandwich and then ironed it all together, flipped it over and ironed it from the back side of the fabric. So now I have this sheet, and this is what I did before I left. So now that I'm here, I took my um, Karen K. Buckley Perfect Circle templates. You could use Mylar here. Of course, you could use cardboard, anything that's heat resistant. And I cut a whole bunch of circles. So the small circles I cut were um, two inches, and then the larger ones are two and three quarter inches. So I just I just took my scissors and I put the Teflon shape right on top of it and I cut around it. I probably ended up with, I don't know, maybe 10 large and 10 small circles. And now we're gonna take those and stitch on them individually to make little pictures um, little places to keep buttons, beads, you know, just all the scraps that we have. The little circle, crocheted around it, added my favorite beverage of all time, <laughs> Red Bull. And so this is what I call a uh, pull tab petal flower. And um, it was really kind of fun. I, As you can see, I am in love with this drink. I have a ton of pull tabs. I knew I was going to do something someday. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with these, but I'm making them. When I travel and I have all my glass where stacked these could be like little buffers between those bowls which is kind of cool it also dual serve as red bull coasters i mean how perfect would that be and then um bottle caps i they're so pretty on the top i can't throw those away either i know i'm sick but um, i have a ton of them and i thought these are these are perfect these are like little um bottle cap cameos so i want to teach you how to crochet a, a little bezel and to put the bottle cap in and then the little petals that you can do on the outside let's get started on some of these little round shapes i guess circles is my thing i don't know why i started to cut these into circles um i didn't really have a plan i just thought circles i could have done leaves i could have done all kinds of different things with this really cool piece of fabric that i created just from my scraps but I don't know, today it was circles, I just went with it. Here's one of the smaller circles, and just every circle that you cut, you'll see a different image. You know, you can squint at it, see if something will emerge. If nothing's coming to mind, one of the best things to do is take a picture of it and look at it from afar. It's almost like having it on a design wall. And it's amazing how many more images will appear when you're looking at it from far away than just staring at this piece with all this messy stuff on it. So that's a little hint for you. Now here, this is a pretty easy one. This is a little, you know, leaf that I fussy cut and stuck on there. Um, on this piece, you can still see a bunch of the wonder under on the top. It's not sticky. It's just shiny, so I can cover that or not. It doesn't really matter. I, I'll probably stitch on it, but let's do the sleeve first. So I've got this scrap of threads and yarn, which is the whole point, right? Get rid of this stuff and find challenging ways to use it up. It's so, so much fun. And I think what I'm gonna do is just couch this on the outside of this leaf and then maybe up the vine. Although by the time I get there, I might do the vine and something else. And all you have to do for that is thread a needle. 
Make sure the end is knotted and just start down here. This is already such a mess anyway. So it doesn't really matter. You can leave the raw edges hanging out. But you just couch over this thread and just keep it in place. And I'd say every eighth of an inch or so. The easiest thing to do is come up on the outside of the thread and down on the applique side to make sure that you're not lifting up the applique. All right, so come up on the outside. I would like to maybe wrap the outside. So you can see this is just a scrap piece of size 8 pearl cotton. This was um, just sock yarn from the leftover yarn F from my gypsy satchel. And then I'm going to wrap. This yarn, just like um, a barbershop pole, you know, just spiral it around. Okay, and I'll wrap all the way up, around, up the center, and probably just put in some spokes for the other veins here. You know, I take inspiration from the fabric, like this side of the leaf there's little white dots, so if I have some little white beads or white yarn, I'll probably work some French knots here maybe do a couple color beads here. Just look at it and um, it's kind of fun to challenge yourself to make a, a, an image or a design or just something pretty being inspired by the scraps that you have from a project. Um, now here I'm seeing like this this little band of yarns I think maybe it's a little turnip or something. A botanical item that has little sprouts coming from it. So I think what I'm going to do here is cut cut something from here just so that the black sh outline shows on the other side of this little round disc here. To hold this in place, I'm not even going to turn the edges or anything, it's just too small. And really this isn't our masterpiece, this is just playing around, right? So I've got a beading needle threaded with beading thread, or black thread. Come up on the, remember the outside of the applique and then stab down into the applique and that way you're not reaching and trying to fray the edges even more. All right, so I'm gonna come up here to this next black piece. Pick up a bead, and I see in my bead tray here I have black bugles. So I might put those up in through here. We'll see what that looks like, then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I did end up putting the bugles on the bottom of these little sprouts here and then each sprout has a little top. And this is just such a fun way to use up a, a pile of scraps. You know, like the next section, I have this arc, this circle almost that was here. So I think what I'm gonna do is in the center, work long and short stitch with a dark color. So here I've got three strands of DMC floss. and just work from the center out. Long stitch. And then a short stitch. Okay, so this is what the inner burst looks like. 
And then when you want to do the stitch going out, just insert your needle. This is three strands of a lighter DMC and take it to the inside of your outline there. So what I'm going to do is come up not, you know, pretty much right next to it. Long and short stitch works really well if you can split the tops of the fibers from the stitch you're going into, even in a different color. And as you're going around the circle, come up a little higher. See, I've got a little space in there. Okay. And then just for like this time, we'll go a little deeper. Right next to the thread before it. You split the fibers of the thread underneath that. You can see that. Okay, okay and just keep pulling that in all the way around the circle. Or whatever you want. I mean, maybe you decided that you, you know, inside these arcs, you do a bullion, a crochet bullion, or you can put a button. You know, anything that comes to your mind. That's sort of the fun. You know, up here I definitely want to visit some of these copper threads that are coming in, so maybe I'll put some of those beads or find a fabric that has that copper in and just, just create a, a nice little image that we can then use as our base to crochet around and get those pull tabs on. All right, so that's kind of cool. That ended up like looking like a little flower sort of facing up. And then here, I've got these gold threads. So those just might be like little sheaves or pieces of wheat, something like that. Just pouching over them, you know, you don't really, you don't even have to stress over it or try to find anything, you know, really specific or make an image. You can just play, working with small pieces and scraps and just playing and practicing. This is a great time to get out your old embroidery books and practice some stitches on something that really doesn't matter so much because really this is just so serendipitous. We don't have a plan. We're not, um, like I said, we're not creating our masterpieces. Although a lot of the times things like this do turn into a masterpiece or an idea for one. So that's kind of the other reason I like to play around because this is how ideas pop into my head when I'm actually working on something. So I might just put in a few stems, sort of fill this background area up. You see I am just playing here, just completely haphazard, filling the spaces. It's amazing what, what images pop up, even the ones that you weren't even intending. It's really, really fun. I'm going to bring this uh, turquoise color back in, so I'm going to work some French knots all the way up through the background and probably some over here just so that that color travels. And that's all I'm going to do for this one. Okay, so here's my finished little circle. I'm not going to do any more. That's good enough. Um, this is more of an idea tutorial, so I know if you have watched my videos before, I do French knots and so many of them. So um, I definitely go back and look at the embroidery one. I show you how to the secret of French knots in that one. So now we need to get a backing on this one. Like here's the first one that I did, and this was just a mess of fabrics and threads as well. And then I had this circular piece of um, fabric, decided to do grid work and beads on it, and I kind of got this sort of hot air balloon sort of feel. So I put a little string on it, and you can see I've done some just X's, regular stitching, you know, nothing really advanced or crazy just use your imagination and and have fun playing with different different things the back 
is just a, a fabric, you know, a scrap of fabric from your project. And I took the same Mylar template, the Karen K. Buckley Perfect Circle, drew a circle with Frixian pen on the back side of a fabric, and now I'm going to cut with a seam allowance, just a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Thread a needle with sewing thread and run your stitch, a running stitch, in between the line and the edge, so about an eighth of an inch away. Okay, once you're all the way around, then go ahead and place that uh, template circle back on the line and pull your string together, and then you've got a perfect circle which matches the same size as this guy. So rather than sew it inside out and try to attempt turning this inside out, which would be a nightmare, um, basically what you're going to do is once this is gathered, I take a few more stitches, pull it tight, take this to your pressing surface, and spray it with starch, and then iron it. Okay, and once you have your seam established after you press it, just lift open, loosen the stitches a little bit, remove the template. Now I am thinking that these, I, I do want these to be sort of padded still because I think it's kind of a fun idea definitely to um, use these in between glassware as I travel or you know, even vertical between glass bottles and things. I'm always looking for something. So unless I turn it into some fantastic art piece, that's what I'm thinking currently. That could change as I make more of these. Um, but I am going to keep the padding. So I cut a circle of batting the exact same size as the template. And just push that batting inside the seam allowance. Okay, and then that will be the same size as your decorative piece. And then you're going to blanket stitch all that around. Yep, not this thread because as I blanket stitch, I want to be able to manipulate this seam allowance. Where it's so small, you really don't even need to pin it together. So how I did that was I threaded a strand of pearl eight cotton, tied a knot on one end, come up through the seam allowance in the fold, hold the pieces together one eighth of an inch. Come straight down and straight through the other side. Okay, so an eighth of an inch away, an eighth of an inch down, straight through. So we're still an eighth of an inch on this side. Make sure your needle is over your thread here. And then slowly pull it through. And when you blanket stitch that all the way around, it takes care of all the raw edges. And it's great because it skips a step. You know, I don't sew these two together. I'm just blanket stitching them together. And the other thing that this serves as is we're going to crochet around it. So this top thread is going to be our crocheting spaces that we can get into. Okay, so here is the finished disc. Nice, clean edge. You could definitely stop here. I mean, these would be really cool appliques for a quilt. I mean you can make little art pieces out of these. You can hang them up as you know in a, in a mobile. You can sew buttons on the back. All kinds of ideas are popping up into my head. But I'm really kind of sold on this idea of adding the um, pull tabs because you have so many of them. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to crochet around this circle. Um, again, so I have a tiny little hook just so I can get inside here. And then I've got some leftover yarn from putting the kits together. So this is just a small ball of 
lace yarn. I use a lot of sock yarn, a lot of really tiny yarn since I work in such small scale. Uh, a little slip knot. And then all you're going to do is slip the hook under the vertical bar, the top bar of a blanket stitch and work a single crochet and just do that all the way around. Um, but this is how I add crochet onto fabric is by first working a blanket stitch and giving myself a stitch to work into to be able to grab for a uh, crochet pattern. Okay, so go all the way around. So you could stop here. Certainly it looks so pretty just with this little braid and then use these as appliques once again. Or, continuing on, slip stitch in the first single crochet to join, chain one, single crochet in that same stitch that you joined in, chain three, skip one, single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, skip one, single crochet. Do that all the way around. And then you have these little chain spaces here. So when you get to the end, you want to manipulate it so that you have an even number of holes because we're going to crochet these um, these uh, pull tabs on every other one. Okay, so the first one we'll just do three single crochets into the space. One, two, three. This should work for pretty much any pull tab. A lot of them are, are round here, so it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you know you're going to want your tab like this. So fold it under. A little bit easier to crochet. Okay, just make sure that your thread is on the top of it here. Go into the space and into the, the uh, space of the pull tab and pull the yarn through in a single crochet. And then Pull that tab out of the way so that the, the thread is on this side of the tab. We're not going to wrap the tab into the three singles that we're going to do in this space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and then pull the tab over, making sure that you're still orienting it. So if you flip it up, the right side's going to show. And then just single crochet into the tab again. So lock that in place. Three singles into the next one. It's easier to continue around the ring if you leave these pull tabs down and under. We are going to flip them up and I'll show you how to do that. But this is what it should look like on the side here or on the bottom. If it's around, it's just going to be on both sides. That's what it's looking like. But as you work, again, just leave that down underneath. Okay, so to put on another tab, again, just make sure. That's how it's going to end up. So just flip it under. Anchor that down. One, two. Three, and then when you get to this side, just work a single crochet 
and then lock it in by doing the three single crochets in the next space. One, two. I have uh, 22 holes, so that means I'm going to end up adding 11 of these pull tabs. Okay, now once you're all the way around, slip stitch in that first single crochet you did. And then cut it and end it. And then pull a knot in this pretty tightly and weave that into the back. Um, this needs to be crocheted pretty tightly so that these sort of stay in place. I mean, obviously they're not going to stay perfectly in place, but all you do is you just pull this and then put the bottom, the arc of it, behind the stitches. You know, and then you can just kind of play with it. And they stay pretty good, you know, good enough for our, our purposes, my purposes here. If you're going to go on to make this into an art piece, you can definitely stitch this down into a background fabric. You know, really what we're going for here is just reusing, renewing, recycling. And uh, you know what? If I make a whole bunch of these, if we all make flowers and crochet around our pull tabs, why, we could save the planet. Yeah, we could have a whole project. We'll call it Project Pull Tab, <laughs> right? Okay, and then they just sort of float, just pull them pretty tight. And there you have another pull tab petal. Full. Okay, so here I have three so far. These are just so much fun. I I don't know, maybe some, when I make a bunch of them, something else will come to me. But right now they are Red Bull coasters and bowl cushions. Um, this one was kind of fun. So the, the bigger circles, uh, what I ended up doing was putting the template, you know, somewhere on the side and then cutting it out, cutting out a moon shape. Careful not to cut your template there, which gives another circle that same size, but it also gives this moon shape. And these can be appliqued as well. What I did here in this one is I took and I appliqued that onto a scrap of fabric that I had fused on one side just to make it stiffer and then just put beads and made sort of a constellation looking thing and then did the bigger circle padded and folded over quilt back that I did on the small ones so that they will all end up to be the same size and then of course you can use these moon pieces as something completely different on a different piece as well. I want to show you how to make these um, holders for bottle caps. This is a little bezel that we'll make separately and then insert the cap in and basically gather it tight. It's really simple. And there are a million things you can do with these. I think these would be great little magnets. I think if you stitch them together in one big piece, it actually might be a really cool um, bed runner you know, just at the foot of a bed or, you know, whatever. So you can actually collect uh, bottle caps from different places that you visited and then crochet them and keep them in a collection. So um, this is a really quick little project. And basically all you're going to need is a size 8 pearl cotton and some sock yarn or lace yarn, a 1.75 millimeter hook, and that's it. Okay, and with that hook and the size 8 cotton, you're going to chain 20 stitches. All right, so chain 20. Slip stitch in that first stitch to join it into a ring. Chain 1. And then work 26 single crochets into this ring. So in other words, don't go into the individual stitches, just go directly into the big circle of the ring and work 26 single crochets. Okay, so once you have your 26, slip stitch in that first single crochet to join. Chain three, one, two, three. 
and then double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, double crochet into the next stitch. So all 26 stitches will get a double crochet and you're going to chain one in between them. Okay, when you get all the way around, make sure you remember to do that chain one and slip stitch it in the second initial chain to join it. Okay, and then just make sure you have the 26 um, chain spaces around. Now it's important that this measures an inch and a half at this point so that the bottle cap will fit. If you're too loose, you need to go down and hook. And obviously if you're too tight, then go up a size. Just play with it. It doesn't take that long. Okay, so now we're going to do two single crochets into each chain space. Okay, so when you do that, we're going from 26 stitches to 52 stitches. Okay, so two single crochets in every chain space. It's really easy to get into. Slip stitch in the top to join. And then we're immediately going to go right into decreases. Okay, so chain one. Insert your hook into the first stitch, then into the second stitch. So you'll have three loops on there. Yarn over and bring through all three. So you're going from two to one. Into the first stitch. Don't finish the single crochet out. Go into the second. Yarn over. Go through all three. You can do that all the way around. You'll be back down to 26 stitches again. Okay, and you can kind of start to see the top um, kind of caving in. And when you get all the way to the top, slip stitch. And when you cut this piece, cut a you know, decent amount, maybe 10, 12 inches, because we're going to use this to gather and weave in. Like that. And then insert the cap into the bezel. I'm just going to have to manipulate it a little bit. Okay, and then center this as, as best you can. Um, you can manipulate this as we, as we gather this around, but um, thread your top thread onto a needle. And then just take the two stitches of the single crochets. and pick them up from the outside going in. Make sure you're picking up two stitches here and not one. You'll just stretch the thread out. See that? You're picking up two threads. And I'm not piercing the threads themselves. I'm going in the holes, almost like I'm sticking a crochet hook in because when I pull together, I don't want any too much resistance. I want it to gather freely. Okay, so just keep picking up those threads and go around it twice. And then run this thread down towards the back and weave these in. And tie a knot between the two if you want to. But even the back is pretty decent, you know, so there's no sharp edges. You could stop here and make these the cutest little magnet set. You know, it'd be a great gift for someone that loves, you know, has a favorite beer or whatever, you know. But we're going to make it a little girlier. So um, grab the same hook and some lace yarn or sock yarn. And we'll make the um, the flower petals that go around it. Alrighty, so to get these little guys into flowers, and of course you can do any pattern here. Um, this is just a real simple one. Um, start at the bottom. Take your hook and go into one of the posts of those double crochets on the side. And bring the yarn through into a single crochet. Okay, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. 
skip a post and single crochet into the next post. All the way around. I'm just going to do the classic fan in here. So in every space, single crochet, half double, double, half double, single. And just work those little fans in every single space going across. Okay, so again it's single. Half double. Double. Half double. Single. And go all the way across and then slip stitch to join and weave the ends in the back. I think these are so cute. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them quite yet. I'm going to go gather all my bottle caps and see what kind of collections I can come up with. And I hope you found inspiration. And um, I want to thank you again so much for your comments. All who commented on the first video have been entered into the drawing for the mess kit. So thank you so much. It was so fun hearing from you and your ideas and what you guys are working on. Please comment on this video. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you have worked on with bottle caps or pull tabs. Let everyone be inspired by some of the things that you're working on. And of course, um, every commenter will get another entry into the drawing. You know, save your bottle caps, save your pull tabs, save your scraps different threads, different yarns, different found objects, buttons, and build a color story that you can play with and enjoy some creative free time. And we will see you next week for Scrapplique. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful week.